What I'm after when I draw my pictures is I'm after your, your guts. I'm, I want you to feel something. I don't want you to like me necessarily. It's like the same with my characters. And, and what I'm after when I draw is, is evocation. It's, it's not pretty. I love beauty. I don't care about pretty. I got to draw a couple of issues of, of the secondary Spider-Man title. They've guest starred this character, Daredevil, that I'd never really paid much attention to. I mean, I'd read the old Stanley Jean Cullen issues, and I, and I, and I really enjoyed them, but, but I had never thought of this guy as a major player. And this guy, Daredevil, I kind of dug him because, well, how many superheroes are known for what they can't do? I mean, Superman can fly and lift, you know, lift up buildings and all of that. Batman's ridiculously smart and he's got all the technology in the world. And Spider-Man can spin webs and swing across buildings. Daredevil, he's blind. He can't see. That's his distinguishing feature. I fell in love. This guy was perfect. He could be the, the, the perfect hard-boiled superhero. Along the way, I decided he had to be a Catholic because only a Catholic could be a vigilante and an attorney at the same time. So I think religion and, pol and politics both have a, a very profound relation to comics because cartooning is taking reality and making it more so. It's like Hitchcock said about melodrama, is reality with all, with, with all the boring parts taken out. There was a lot of ruckus when, 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 when I was working on Daredevil as it found its voice because the violence was so harsh and because people were getting cut up. Mostly it was the harshness of it, the way that had, had, a, had a strong reaction from people because it was as if I brought, um, you know, whiskey into a playground or something. In comics, in comic books, in superhero comics, people have wasted an awful lot of creative energy and hard work looking for kids who aren't there. The audience who read Daredevil was not juvenile. They, they weren't. And I got this, this character who'd been pretty, I mean, I think even the most generous people would call it a grade B character. He was the poor man's Spider-Man. And, and, and everybody knew that. But I kind of saw this guy as being something much cooler. Matt's been the guy I punished for, for, for all my you know, mistakes and sins. Because <laughs> he, he really is, he is a flawed hero. In that, in that he, he's a man who intends to do good and causes much damage. Matt should have been a villain. He had a horrible childhood. His romantic life is the worst. Oh, sure, the girls look great, but they end up dead or killing him or something. Um, and, but somehow this guy redeems himself and, and moves ahead. He just doesn't give up. He's just like his dad. With Born Again, what I was really at, it was, it was, I think, the first of a series of works that, that, that I, I've been involved with, where I've looked at taking the machinery of the hero apart and putting it back together in, in, in leaner form so it was more pure. An awful lot of the conventions of the superheroes comes from the fear that was generated in the 1950s. By, by the Senate hearings and the Comics Code and all that censorious nonsense. In Born Again, I really wanted to just say, okay, once and for all, I know you guys were moving fast. I mean, I know you guys, I know Stan, Bill, you know, Stan Lee, Bill Everett, Wally Wood, all the rest. I know we all have to work for a living, and I know you kind of bashed this one out, okay? But let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at what works. And the Catholicism angle worked. And the senses work. I mean, Daredevil is by far one of the sexiest here in comics. But beyond that, this lawyer vigilante thing, I mean, it's always been shaky. It's a, it's a fun contradiction, but it's a contradiction. And so I thought, break it down. Destroy him. And then have the real deep hero emerge. And what I thought was the winning idea was I got rid of the costume 
for a good long time. And so that he wasn't wearing the tights and, and you realize the hero wasn't the costume. The costume was just dressing around the hero. I introduced a lecture in the first issue of Daredevil that I wrote. I had been waiting to, to, to bring her in. I thought there was something stupid about the way superheroes always had these normal girls for girlfriends. Why? I mean, why would, why would, why would there be a Lois Lane to Superman? Why wouldn't he be running around with Wonder Woman? I mean, she can match him. Why wouldn't these people be operatic in their romance the way they are in their combat? I mean, is there anything more insipid than seeing some superhero in a love scene and all of a sudden he's just another guy who looks like us in a bed naked? No, these people bring down buildings with their passion. That's what they do with their fights. And Daredevil needed a romance that was worthy of, of him of his passion and his, and his physicality. And, and Electra is, is, is such a good Greek myth uh, from the house of Atreus, and Agamemnon as her dad, and, and as a vengeful force. And also, con, Freud named a, a complex after her. I mean, she's, she's got issues. And, and, I, and, I, and I just expanded upon that. And also, I, I mean, it was, it, was, um, it was just an exploration of what I guess superhero sex would be like. I've been writing uh, Daredevil for, for, for a, a few months when, I, when I, I told him I wanted to steal the kingpin away from Spider-Man. And that was risable at Marvel. Like, who the hell wants the kingpin? He was the Jackie Gleason of supervillains. I mean, he, he might as well have been called Fat Man. Because what he mainly did was he used his belly to fight Spider-Man. It was, it was, he, was, he was not known as the most brilliant achievement of the Stanley regime, okay? But, I, but he was just what I needed, because I needed a gang lord. And, and my, my colleague, John Byrne, took me aside at one point. And, and you know, as he was doing his X-Men run, and, and we were just having a ball being rivals at the time. And he said, you know what you got to do? He said, you got to do this. You draw this guy the way he's been drawn for the whole first issue he's in. And I went, yeah. John was older and entered the field earlier than I did. And he said, then you turn him into a Frank Miller character. Light him. Said, You're the guy who does the lighting. And, and, he, and he gave me a wonderful moment, which is where the kingpin goes from being this line clear guy, you know, visually conceived by John Romito, who has one of the most beautiful lines that the field has ever seen. And then I have him light up a cigarette, and all of a sudden he was mine. There was a tension with the kingpin, bullseye, and 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 Electra and Daredevil that all was a psychodrama. Bullseye was, is the ultimate bad boy. He's, he's a psychopathic killer, yes. But he's really good at it, and he's really smart. The final act of the Electra story um, had to involve him. And she had to be cruelly and coldly murdered by the worst possible enemy Daredevil ever had because it was his ultimate humiliation along with losing the love of his life, he also, it was in, in, in such foul circumstance that the, that the man was mocking her as he murdered her. And I, I don't think the symbolism of that sigh going through her was lost on much anybody. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was a rape murder in a superhero comic, it was pretty weird. I, in, I, I, to this day, I'm still surprised that, that Marvel was able to just say, okay, and in comics, you can't waste time. Comics exist in time. The reader is moving through time. It's, it's not gallery work. And so, and so you have to know how to produce it expeditiously because that's where comics gain their energy. That's what makes them sexy. It's what makes them fun, is that they, they, they don't slow down in, in, in an artistic sense. Everything is narrative. What's done by the hand in, in, in comics is something that movies cannot approach. 
we felt so long like we were uh, like you know the retarded little bastard nephew of media that we've forgotten that we're better at certain things than they are. And, and then, yeah, movies, movies are much better at a bunch of things. Movies are much more powerful. Movies control pace. A cartoonist has to be really smart to slow you down. A filmmaker just has to leave the camera where it is for a long time. And, and, and it's, it's a different set of virtues and, 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 and weaknesses. So yeah, I came, I came in wanting to make comics more cinematic. I stay in wanting to make them less so.